Yo, what's up guys, Genus Hexer, and today I'm here to bring you my week 1 game of the Hive Visual Division. Really excited for this season, and we'll be facing my good friend and defending champion Jack. So, let's get straight into it. So, um, as you can see, I have both of our drafts laid out here. Um, the blue highlight is for a Z move user, and the red highlight is a status Z move user. So, as you can see, Jack has a Sundress, Mega Scissor, Latios. Decidueye and a bunch of fat stuff and then I have a pretty interesting draft with a very threatening core in Celestia Lizard X, a Starmie Roserade, uh, Landris uh, which is Sand Force Landris so not Sure Force and then Z Terrakion, Cofagogus, Gastrodon, Drapion, Hitmontop and Kangaskhan. So, um, personally I would say that I have a good matchup against Jack because uh, Zard can uh, pretty much uh, destroy his team once I get rid of the uh, Gligar and then Terrakion can also function as an extremely good wall breaker because uh, Rock Nimz pretty much just guarantees a kill. Um, Starmie is also pretty good after we get rid of Umbreon and then overall I just feel like it's a really good matchup because it's hard for him. Like the largest threat on Jack's team by far is definitely the Sunders because like I don't have a solid electric resist that isn't quad weak to something that Sunders can pack such as like Grass Knot for Gastrodon or HPS for Landorus so uh, Sunders definitely the biggest offensive threat and then Latios can be pursued trapped by my Drapion so it's not really a big deal and I do expect the Scarf Latios to come because uh, that's definitely his safety button for my Zardak so uh, upon team uh, team preview the monster I expected him to bring is going to be Z move Sunders uh, probably Psychnium Z or uh, yes Psychnium Z seems most likely for my Rosary uh, Defensive Scissor was U-turn, so he can capitalize on my Celesteel and Zard x uh, Scarf Latios, uh, a Rock Setter, which I believe to be Gligar, because that's an overall very good check to all of my, uh, most of my offensive threats. Armbion for the Starmie, and then last one, uh, uh, I was thinking he could, he could either bring Toxapex or the Salazzle, so either one, I couldn't really, uh, it re really depends on how he, uh, what he really wants to bring, but Salazzle, uh, I can definitely see like uh, street attacks, nasty plot, and Toxapex can be like knock off or like something similar to that. But um, and let's get straight into my team builder. So uh, here we have my team for Jack, and as you can see, I brought Megazard X, Starmie, Terrakion, Drapion, Celesteela, and Landorus. So let's start off with the uh, Zard. We have a very standard set: Dragon Dance and three attacks. Uh, Claw and Fire Punch and EQ hits everything on his team. Um, I ran uh, Fire Punch over Flare Blitz because, um, for, um, first of all, I don't have any recovery on this Zard. And then the only thing Fire Punch is really for is for the Decidueye and the Scizor. Uh, I guess you can argue that Flare Blitz hits like Gligar and Sunder is harder, but like, I don't really. I, I don't want the recoil on Zard, especially because it's extremely prone to getting weakened by rocks. That's my only remove on this team is going to be Landris. So, um, yeah, so we have DD, three attacks, um, EQ for the potential Toxapex, so it can't haze, stop, haze Toxic swap, stop me. Uh, EV spread, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure 40 speed out speed is like Scizor. I'm not really familiar with my speed tiers, honestly, I don't bother remembering them, but, um, yeah, I because of Jack's weird speed tiers with his fastest mom being like Sundress uh, and Salazzo, and then then moving down to Latios, and then I believe uh, Mesprit and Umbreon, uh, not 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 Umbreon, Mesprit and uh, Decidua. I want to say. Um, yeah, so like his speed tiers are extremely weird, so I can afford to run a lot of bulk on my Zard. I think 40 speed actually allows me to outspeed Scarf Latios. No, I mean uh, not Scarf Latios, but like. Uh, outspeed Sunder, someone say after DD. I I'm not sure uh, exactly. I built this team like two weeks ago. So next up, we have a Starmie with um, tricks to attack. So uh, the good uh, I run choice specs because this thing is a absolute nuke to Jack's team, which is only switching being Umbreon. And if he doesn't run Max Spadef Umbreon, a analytic boosted uh, hydro, hydro pump actually does 70. Uh, approximately 70% upon switching switching to a uh, no spadef max HP Umbreon meaning that if he's like max defense Umbreon then he actually has n no switching to the Starmie after all with his only water resist being like uh, uh, what do you call it? Latios and Toxapex and Latios can be easily trapped so 
If he op opts to bring um, Max Defense on Breon, then this thing absolutely destroys his team. And then Trick is if he brings Max Pedef, in which case I can't actually break the Umbreon, then I'm gonna trick my specs onto the Umbreon, making it a much uh, less threatening defensive pivot because like I can just go into my Terrakion, get my justified boost and just rip a hole to his team. So uh, speaking of Terrakion, we have Terrakion next. Um, SD, 3 attacks, EQ again for the uh, Tox effects. Um, Rock Nim D just he has no rock resist, I believe. Um, yeah, he has no rock resist. Um, uh, rock Nim D claims a kill at plus two via Scizor, Pex, Gligar, and like Umbreon, and like it's basically just it, it's just an absolute nuke. Uh, Z, uh, all out, all out pummeling hits the Scizor harder, but the sheer fact of him not having a rock resist just makes this such a spammable mon via his team. And especially because of how bulky Jack's draft is, this mon is like a huge asset of VSM. And like, because of how uh, weird of speed tier he has, I can afford to run a bunch of bulk and adamant nature on my Terrakion, which will help nab some crucial KOs. So. These three are going to be like my main wall breaking call core uh, vs Jack, and the other three Pokemon are just going to be my defensive backbone. So moving on, we have Drapion. Uh, leftovers, Pursuit, EQ, Knockoff, and Taunt. Pursuit is for the Latios, obviously. It does around 70% or 60 to 70 once I trap it. Knockoff, so you can get rid of leftovers on Umbreon and then uh, stuff, oops, stuff such as Evil Light on Gligar. Then uh, EQ is for the Pex and Taunt is to prevent like uh, SD Scizor, uh, Gligar from roosting and then like um, recover Toxapex and like uh, set up the Scizor and whatnot. But this thing's mainly there here to trap the uh, Ladius. Uh, Max Pedef to be able to tank Draco's uh, well. I uh, If he's going to be a Tectonic Ridge, I can always scout with Celestia, so that's not really a problem. And then, yeah, it's a uh, very self explanatory set. It's really only to trap the Latios. We have Battle Armor, so we can't get crit by the uh, Draco Meteor. So, moving on, we have the Celestia. So, interesting set. Um, Leech Seed hits everything. Um, Flamethrower hits Scizor, Stone Edge hits Salazzo and uh, Sunder. So, Wakanda Berry allows us to tank a plus two Thunderbolt if we absolutely have to. Stone Edge does around 60 to 75, meaning after two Leech Seed damage. Then uh, Sunrush is in Stone Edge, Stone Edge range. So if you can get off a Leech Seed, we can just go for the Stone Edge and then go for the Protect, and that would be uh, Sunrush out of the way, which is definitely the largest threat to our team. So uh, overall, it's a really uh, good set. Yes, him. 120 speed is, I believe, outspeed Scizor. And then. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, it's prone to being set up by Barbarical, which is definitely. The second largest offensive threat, I would say, uh, vs my team because, um, yeah, Mayo nearly swept me with it in the mock, but uh, I managed to, um, I still see managed to tank. I managed to bait out the Z move and then tank a hit with Celestia and then Leech Seed into Protect Spam. So, um, Barbarical is gonna be annoying if he brings it, although I do doubt that he's gonna bring Barbarical. And then finally, we have a Landorus Yachi Berry Sand Force, uh, uh, yeah. Knock off the Fox EQ Stone Edge. So this Landros is more like a utility Pokemon. Um, this is definitely going to be my lead 80% of the time. Yeah, I led this uh, Pokemon in all of my mocks because of how like versatile it is against Jack's team. And then um, Knock off gets rid of the Eevee Light on uh, Gligar, which is extremely important. And Defog is just to keep my Zard safe since I don't even have spin on my Starmie. EQ hits everything and then Edge hits Sunderous Yachty Berry to tank the HP Ice from the Sunday. Uh, I was debating running a U-turn but like I do not like walled, being walled by Sunday so I uh, ultimately went with Stone Edge instead. Uh, EV spread is pretty self-explanatory. I didn't need much speed for this team so I just uh, for, uh, went for max bulk and then max attack adamant. So um, not really a extremely interesting EV spread I must say but um, it works. And that's what it does. Uh, so because like uh, with this team, I actually won every one of my mocks against like K Crick, Mayo, Bill, AVP, Techno, and then uh, Dugo. So I'm probably missing someone, but yeah, I won every single one of my mocks with this specific team. So I was pretty confident in um, uh, in this match on um, beating Jack. So yeah, with that, let's just get straight into the game. Um, yeah, so. 
Yeah, so as you can see, Jack brings uh, pretty much what I expect uh, with Salazzo over Toxapex. So we could have potentially bought Roost on Zard and like Rock Polish on Terrakion, but uh, we want to cover all options. So yeah, so um, from first glance, um, as, I, as I said, you, I'm going to be expecting like Psychium Z, Sundarus, uh, Scarf Laddy, uh, Defensive Ligar, Umbra, Spadef Umbreon. Uh, maybe like Specs, Scar for Life Orb, Salazzo, and then um, a defensive Scissor. So, um, like I said, I'm gonna lean my Landris because uh, in like majority of my rock mocks, most people are, most people are gonna lead either their Scissor or their Gligar, and because Gligar can get up rocks ASAP. So what I can do here is I'm just gonna lead off with my Landris. I'm gonna be able to knock off his Gligar, which is a great turn one for me as he's gonna go for his rocks. So what this allows me to do, I just get a free defog, and the first two turns are great for me. I exchange like 6% damage to get off uh, a knockoff on his Gligar, which is fantastic as he goes into a scissor. So I know he's going to go for a U-turn here. I can't actually go hard into my Celesteela because his Sundress isn't in range of the Stone Edge yet. So what I'm going to do is just going to get off some damage, uh, go for the EQ on the scissor as we do 37. This damage shows me he's like max HP 160 defense scissor, like definitely not max defense but like he has uh, HP investment and probably a lot so. I'm going to get off 37% as he goes for his U-turn, he's going to go into a Salazzo so this play here is extremely interesting because uh, by EQing the scissor I probably revealed that I'm max attack adamant on my Landris and he probably did not expect max HP alongside this spread as well. So uh, this Fire Blast Life Orb is actually a extremely favorable for me to live. Fire Blast is like 61 to like 78 I want to say. So it's a really good roll for me. So. I don't have any switch-ins either because the Salazzo outspeeds my Stormy and I don't want my Drake Pound being weakened so and Zard has no recovery so like I obviously ain't going that so right here he's gonna go for this Fire Blast that's 67 and we managed to go for the EQ and knock out the Salazzo so great first few turns uh Landris just like doing sorry <laughs> Landris just doing what it's good at so um yeah so he decides to go into his Gligar right here I go for the Stone Edge uh, I was debating going hard into my Starmie because like I was assuming he would go for his rocks but I was like uh, I don't want rocks up so I'm just gonna spam defog and just sack my Landris to prevent rocks so I'm just gonna get off some damage first as he goes for his U-turn actually instead so I'm glad I didn't go Starmie so goes his Sundarus uh, I'm like uh, I just I'm just gonna go for the edge prevent him from setting up anything Landris is pretty useless at this point except for like getting rid of hazards but he can't switch in on rocks either way so there's really no point for keeping this thing around Except for maybe a sack purpose, but like I have no switch into Sundress anyway, and I can't afford him to go for the Nasty Plot or the Agility. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go for the uh, Stone Edge, as he's gonna knock me off with a Grass, uh, knock me out with a Grass Knot. So right here, I could have definitely won uh, Starmie because I'm Specs, and Hydro Pump just claims a kill if he's not spread the Fumbreon. But uh, I'm actually gonna go into my Zard instead because this uh, Evil Light is knocked off on uh, Gligar. And it's at 53%. He actually has no switch into Dragon Claw whatsoever. And there's no Z move from Sundress that's gonna kill me directly. Even Z Focus Blast does not kill me with uh, the same amount of bulk I have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mega evolve and go for the Dragon Claw relatively safely as he goes into his Umbreon. So Umbreon it does about 35%, and after calculating this in battle, it shows that he has actually max defense Umbreon, which is fantastic news for me because what this means is that Starmie just absolutely rapes his team once I get off damage on Nadios and that's easily done by uh, pursuing trap, pursuing it. So uh, he's gonna get some leftovers back. Right here I'm gonna go into Celesteela. Cause I've definitely gone into his ter uh, my Terrakion right here. But uh, the reason I didn't want to go into my Terrakion is because if he goes for the Wish, he can pass the Wish into his um, Scizor. And, uh, or his even his, uh, uh, what do you call it, Latios. Because most likely I'm not gonna rest my Z move straight away. So. What this does is this is a safer play because uh, Terrakion is risky because if he passes a wish into his uh, Scizor slash Latios as I go for the SD, I'm, I'm risking health on my Terrakion and I'm going to have to waste my Z straight away. So um, what this does is uh, this prevents like uh, because it's, uh, 
if he goes for a wish, I can go for a leech seed, catching anything he wants to wish into with a leech seed. And if he wants to stay in, then I can go into the Terrakion the following turn, and that's actually going to give me HP for every turn this Umbreon stays in, which is really, really nice. So overall, just like a middle ground play as I go for the into Celestia, it's going to go... Go for the baton pass, a really really nice play by Jack and really good prep uh, capitalizing on my switches to like Terrakion and whatnot. So it's gonna go into Skylagar. Right here I'm just gonna go for the Leech. I debated going card into Starmie because that would have gained me a kill, but I don't want him going straight for U-turn and so I'm just gonna go straight for the Leech. So right here I make my biggest misplay of the match by far. What I should have done was I should have clicked uh, Leech Seed again. Because there was no reason for him to stay in because he doesn't know my set and I was actually minus, but a uh, minus special attack flamethrower so I actually can't do jack shit to this Gligar but he doesn't know that so he's definitely gonna u-turn and he's not gonna risk the roost right here so what I end up doing is I'm gonna go into my Starmie expecting the roost which is a horrible play because u-turn is so blatantly obvious because of how useless his Gligar is after his evil like got knocked off and he still has Scarf Ladius in the back to revenge my Zard anyway so like this was a horrible play this lost me a shit ton of momentum and like everything that I every piece of mom momentum that I gained from the start of the game I just instantly lost it right there because what would have happened if I went for the double leech seed right here is he would most likely have U-turned into his Thunderous as I went for the leech seed and the situation would just have been like what, like what I said during the prep I'm able to go for the stone edge on the Thunderous and then I can just protect on the following turn and his Thunderous will be dead and I will be put into a fantastic position because what because uh, I Thunderbolt does about 33% to Celesteel's Wakan and Leech is going to recover me around 26% so Celesteel is going to be extremely healthy and Wakan's not going to be in need anymore and we're going to be able to take out two of his largest offensive threats on his team but I make a huge fucking misplay and I go hard into my Starmie as he goes for the U-turn basically I was too focused on my own set, not no noticing that Jack doesn't actually know my Celestia set, so Roosting was an extremely shit play for him, especially because he's a leech. So I make an extremely shit play, goes into my star mini, and now I'm in a 50-50. Because I do not want my Wakan on my Celestia broken, because that's one of my best ways to uh, deal with his Thunderous after it's weakened. And he knows that, uh, well, he knows that uh, Celestia can come in as well because he doesn't know I'm Wakan yet. So, overall, Thunderbolt is 150% his best play. And Draco, if I go Celestia on my Drake uh, on his Draco Meteor, then he's in a ship position because I got off another free leech. And yeah, so uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm expecting the Thunderbolt. I'm gonna go hard into my Drapion as we do catch him on the Thunderbolt and what we can do here is we can catch him with a Pursuit bring him down to about 30% that means everything on this team dies to Hydro from Starmie and if I can get my Starmie and on Gliscor or Scizor because Scizor is at 64 I want to say uh, Specs Hydro to 65 min so um, if, I, if we can get Starmie and on Glagar uh, Scizor we pretty much just get a kill so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the Pursuit right here as we are actually going to unfortunately crit Jackson this turn was huge, well not huge as like in, this turn was really really bad for Jack because he doesn't know, uh, know my sets yet and that, that crit just lost him his game from his standpoint and like he definitely still had the chance to win at this point so like <sighs> the crit's really unfortunate for Jack um, although I do want to say that in my opinion uh, I don't think the end result would have been different the differential would definitely have been different but like i feel like i still had i still had like a extremely decent chance to win not saying jack didn't but like as i feel like if the events went the same way as what happened in the match right now then i feel like i would still have won but like of course with his ladder was being gone he had to play differently so like uh hindsight 2020 i can't really say shit after i, I crit him but yeah, so we unfortunately crit the Ladius right there. What that means is that um, Zara can actually potentially win now. But um, we need Umbreon weekend even more since he's max defense. But like that means Starmie can also just absolutely go in. So that's crit was really unfortunate for him, but like it's mods, I can't really do anything about it. But um right here it's gonna go into a scissor, so um 
Uh, I'm gonna go for the taunt to prevent him from boosting because I need this at uh, 64% so it guarantees dies to my hydro. Um, that's because I'm gonna go for his U turn. And Drapion's really. Oh fuck. Drapion's really useless at this point since Latios is dead. Because what I would have done if I didn't crit the Latios is I would definitely have gone on. Um, what do you call it? Uh, gone the Zard on the uh, U turn. And then. Uh, played around the Umbreon and if you wanted to go his Latios on my Zard and go for the Draco Meteor I can just sack my Zard and then go back into my Drapion to trap it, but um, that's not the point right here But um, if he goes into your Sunderous now I can just sack my Zard and go into my Starmie to claim a kill with Specs Hydro, so um, We're gonna go for the Taunt on the Scizor uh, to keep him low and in Hydro range as he's just gonna U-turn and since Drapion's useless, it's really only here to just go for the Taunt on his Glygar to prevent him from healing. So he's just gonna take me out with an Earthquake. So right here, I go into my Starmie. Um, at this point, I have to risk my Hydro because if I go for the Ice Beam, that means Umbreon can come in safely and wish up. And Scizor can also come in safely and roost up. So I'm gonna have to risk my Hydro. Um, I could have gone Zard here and just spammed Flare Blitz. I mean Fire Punch, but Fire Punch didn't kill, I don't think, at this range. So I'm, I'm just going to go into my Starmie here, and we are fortunately going to land my Hydro. Uh, this, this was probably not a really good play, but like, uh, yeah, so. Goes into his Umbreon, pretty expected. Uh, analytic Specs. Uh, without Analytic, I actually don't do much to the Umbreon, or enough to where I can kill. So what I'm going to do is, here's a 50-50. He can definitely go for Baton Pass, expecting my Terrakion, so... Uh, if he goes for the Baton Pass on my Terrakion, he can potentially go into a Scizor. And because plus zero uh, Continental Crush does not kill it, he can actually roost up. And he can U-turn and then go into his Sundress and do all of that wacky jack sh shit. So like, Sundress is just, go just gonna be a huge problem. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double Hydro, expecting him to go for the Baton Pass. And what this does, what this means is that if I get off the Hydro damage on Umbreon and he goes for the Baton Pass, I pretty much just win right there because Hydro kills the rest of his mons because it's going to leave Umbreon at around 30% and that's going to be in range of a second Hydro so uh, if, if, he, if he do go for the Baton Pass right here as I go for my Hydro then I pretty much win assuming I land all my Hydros and even if I don't land all my Hydros I still have the chance because I have Terracom in the back and um, yeah so Starmie is pretty much my win con at this point it's going to double into a Scizor uh, we go to the Hydro point that crit didn't matter uh, Specs Min did 65 and that's and if he switched it in, that's an analytic booster, so even if he was max but up, that didn't matter at all, so. Goes back into his Umbreon, right here I know I can just safely switch into my Terrakion, because if he baton passes into his Sundress, I can just sack this, go into my Starmie, and then just claim my kill, so. Yeah, she's gonna go for his foul play, and this point is pretty much over. We're gonna go for the Continental Crush, in case he wants to double. Uh, predicting my CC, and we're just gonna take out the Umbreon. Right here, I don't have to risk. Starmie out speeds, Ice Beam KOs. We're just gonna go for the close combat. Prevent him from. Uh, pr so, this, what this means is that I don't have to miss Edge. And if he's like uh, Nasty Plot, Agility, Thunderbolt, Grass Knot, and Power Hacks is my Zard, then I can still lose. But um, yeah, so we're just gonna go for the CC because Starmie out speeds, preventing him from setting up. Um, two boosts uh, if he was dual dance. So yeah, that's gonna be the game. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.